Hi again, Bob from Speed Gems. Today we're going to talk about uh, a kit. This kit's been out for a while. This, a lot of the videos we've done so far have been on kits we're just developing and, you know, kind of an introduction to here we are. Well, this one's been out for about 15 years and uh, I believe we're the only ones doing it. Of course, being the lousy businessman I am, I, uh, I don't realize that we can't sell enough of them to make money on them, but I like them anyway. So we're, we make a kit for the Buick Straight 8s. Um, the one we're looking at right here, this is a, uh, started out life as a 48248, but anybody that knows them can see that it's got the dual carbs and that was uh, pre-World War II, so this is the carb setup is 42 or older. Um, they just look cool. But what we've got on this here is a 700R4 with our kit on it, and I'll start by taking that apart. All right. The, um, <clears throat> I'll go over some identification stuff on these because I also have a 320 here. Uh, I'll show you guys how to identify it as a glance. You know, you, you don't have to call and ask for numbers. We can just show you how to identify it really quick. And then uh, we have four different kits for the straight eights. Uh, there's two for the 320, and then the 233, 248, 263 is another series. I call it a series motor. Um, that's the smaller one. Uh, that has two kits also, so four kits for uh, two basic uh, engine series. Um, I'll start by taking this one apart. Well, we're at the starting point. Back of the motor has been completely uh, Everything's been taken off. This particular engine had a uh, three-speed stick on it. Um, uh, one of the engine identifying things is the, uh, they had the tripod mount up till, I think it was 48. Don't quote me on that, but I think it's 48. This is a 48 motor. You see they got the side mounts on it. Um, the side mounts don't work well with the, uh, you got to trim the, uh, uh, mount on the side of the engine to work with this style intake but uh, they mount better with the uh, newer mounts on them. Uh, <coughs> uh, one thing when you call us on a kit it's important to know we have to know what transmission was originally on it because as usual with the Buicks they uh, had crankshafts that were specific to the transmission so the kit the kit number and components we send you are going to be different depending on what transmission you originally had because the crankshaft is completely different. Different bolt pattern, uh, different size flange, different internal, everything's different about it. Uh, we occasionally get calls from people wanting to put a, they bought a Buick Straight 8 to replace a bad one and they can't get it in their car because it was a stick crank and they've got a, a Dynaflow or something. Yeah, we can't do it. Too different. But anyway, on this one, the uh, adapter plate itself is actually a two-piece because all the straight motors from uh, back in the day, they didn't really have much of a bell housing on them. You know, they used the, they had that wrap-around bell housing. Well, our kit basically creates an area for the transmission to go. Then the second one uh, acts as the, uh, the mount, and part of that spacing has to do with how far the crank sticks out from the face of the, uh, or the back of the block. So, <clears throat> uh, the plates between the 320 and then the small series, which is a 233, 248, and 263, are totally different. Completely different plate, different mount. Now, the, the early 233s, um, it's somewhere around 36 and back, I believe. They had a different um, upper hole right here. And we've got that in the plate, so this plate will fit from uh, the 233 all the way up to the last 263 that they made in 53. Well, I like always make sure your dowel pins are in place that they didn't come out with the transmission. Two flathead screws and they are depend they go in one of these or two of these four holes depending on if you got the older or later motor. And there's uh, 
four seven sixteenths fourteen bolts that go in from the back side. The back side of the adapter, front side of the engine. And I always say this, but when you're putting it together, make sure you torque everything. We just throw it together with an air wrench so you can uh, get this video done quick. You know, we don't want to sit and bore you with torque, but you guys that are putting them together at home be torquing them. Okay, that's the inner adapter plate. And uh, we make the plates out of steel because you got to mount the back of this engine with these plates, basically. You know, they're, that's a long, heavy motor, and uh, we make them out of steel for the strength. And I actually had a guy ask me one time, he says, well, doesn't that make it heavy? It's like, boy, if you're looking for a light motor, you're using the wrong motor. It's a heavy motor. I don't think a couple extra pounds on an adapter plate is going to uh, affect anything at all other than give it, make it stronger. Crank adapter is specific to the crankshaft and that's whether or not you've got a stick transmission or originally had a Dynaflow engine. I'll sh by the way, uh, later on in the video I'll uh, uh, stick some pictures in there that can show you can show you what the difference is in the crankshaft and I'll show you how to do a quick measurement on these things and tell what they are. adapter now I got a spot for our uh, uh, GM flex plate now to make it easy we used a stock uh, Chevrolet 168 tooth flex plate if you ever need to replace it at any time um, please don't call and say, well, I've got a, a flex plate. Can I uh, buy it without the flex plate and save some money? No, we sell it as a kit for a reason. We've found, uh, we sell everything together because we know it works. We've found these flex plates from different manufacturers that are up to uh, uh, 60 thou difference in the depth of the ring gear. Uh, and we found them, I don't know if you'll see it on this one or not, but when you run the bolts in, it actually flex the flex plate out. This uh, center part is normally not bent flat. When they, when they stamp these things with a press, they're normally at a little bit of an angle. So when you tighten the bolts, they usually flex out. Ours flex out at a known rate, and it's the correct distance from the drive gear. So when you get this kit, this is coming with it. The starter's coming with it because we know it works. If uh, a lot of times someone will say, well, I already got a mini high torque starter. Those starters, even though they look the same, they come with different, the holes in the starter block are different positioned because the drive gears are never consistently long. They're, they're up to a hundred thousandths difference in length. So when we sell the kit, we sell all the parts, we know they work uh, commercially available. You can see this flex out when we tighten these up. Now we've got everything ready for the starter. The starter goes on just like on a small block Chevy, not a stagger bolt, but a straight across. And yeah, these can be sourced commercially as well.
right, if you use all our parts, the uh, drive gear distance is engineered into it. Next comes the transmission. And either I'm incredibly strong or we have an empty case here. One of the two. The bolts go all the way through the uh, spacer type of plate and screw into the one that's actually attached to the block. There you have it, it's on the, uh, I won't bore you with the converter because the converter just slides forward and hooks onto the flex plate exactly like if we were putting this on a Chevrolet. The kit just duplicates basically the back end of a Chevrolet small block motor so that you can put any Chevrolet V8 type transmission on here. Right now with this kit on here, we could have put a old aluminum power glide, 350, uh, uh, ST, 300, uh, uh, 400 turbo, 4L80E, you're, you name it. I mean, you can put anything back here. And you can do this to manuals too. You take the flex plate off and you put the 168 tooth Chevrolet neutral balanced flywheel on there. And you can use any stick tranny that they use in the back of a small block also. It's really a versatile kit. Works really well too. We've uh, done quite a few of these. Uh, they've been around for, like I say, about 15 years. Matter of fact, this motor, I've been displaying this motor since about 02. Some of you guys have probably seen it. Uh, the assembly on these things is almost identical on the 320. Uh, you know, if I was to put a 350 or 400 or 480 in here, it'd be exactly the same thing. Um, I guess uh, we could wander over and I can show you the differences in uh, how to identify these things. And the quickest way, it's what I tell people on the phone. They call me up with numbers, and I, I don't know the numbers on these things. You just measure the valve cover, and it's just an approximate measurement. It's approximately uh, 31 inches on the smaller motor. The 233, 248, and 263 all have about approximately 30 and a half to 31 inch valve cover. Okay, now let's walk up to a 320, and I'll show you that one. Right. Well, now we came over to the 320 here. This is a I believe it's a 1941 320. It's also got the dual carbs. Aren't you guys just drooling now, wishing you had those? Anyway, this is uh, after measuring the other one is 31 inches, if you remember. Do the same thing to this one. It's 34 inches. So you want to know which which version of engine you have? Just do the quick measurement. It's either 31 inches or it's 34 inches. All right. Um, after going through the uh, valve cover length identification, I thought I'd show you the back end of the. Uh, of the crankshafts that are different. You can ID, ID those in case you can't. Well, got one that didn't have a transmission on it. Um, if you look, this is what the this is what the crankshaft will look like, whether it's a, a 248, 263, or a 320. The crankshaft back end is the same. It has two pins in it that will be have to be ground off to use our kit. We do not use those pins. They're so tight, I've never been able to get any of them out. You're gonna to have to grind them off. They're really in there tight. It's got the really big uh, uh, opening here for the Dynaflow uh, pilot. And it's a completely different bolt pattern and register size than this. You can't change this to make it into this. Um, and of course, never say never. I got one in one time where somebody had reworked it and got it on there. It wasn't a great job, but they had done it. I was gave them some credit. It's tough. Um, this one is, these are both 320s, by the way. This is the uh, stick 320. And for, besides the register, they actually have these little uh, inserts in them. And the inserts lock into our uh, crank adapter. pretty nicely. Uh, we also have them um, where you knock the inserts out 
and you have to tap the crank. So we've got them a couple ways. Um, to get these out, the ones, the, when we sell you a kit that you have to take these out, I've gotten a lot of pushback. People will tell me, well, they don't come out unless you take the crank out. Well, yes they do. You can drive them back um, probably an eighth of an inch. You cut them off, drive them back another eighth of an inch, cut them off, just get a little cut off wheel and just keep slicing them off and then they come out. And the hole that's left after you take the inserts out is the exact uh, drill size you need to tap them because to the uh, bolts we give you. All right, so there you have it. And uh, usually at the end of the video, it's kind of a new kit. So I'll say, well, this is the first time you've ever seen this. Well, we've been selling these for 15 years. So some of you guys have seen it already. But uh, like I say, you could have put anything behind here, uh, including 4L80Es, uh, you know, anything that's got the Chevrolet bolt pattern. Um, they actually work really well. I've had reports back from guys that, uh, uh, you know, the straight eights, you know what they say is uh, eight in a row makes them go. Well, get, they have a lot of torque. So when you use an overdrive transmission where you're dropping the RPM, they really run well. It's almost like they were, the uh, transmissions were designed for an engine like this. Uh, they get better gas mileage, a lot of power. It uh, works out really good. Um, well, if you got any questions, you can look on our website at uh, www.transmissionadapters.com or call us 763-767-4480.